Olha só do Valdomiro, o Deus da gente é muito e muito grande. Mas eu vou ver, seu Valdomiro, se aqui dentro da Bíblia eu vou achar o seu Deus. Deus caloteiro, Deus caloteiro, Deus caloteiro. Não achei. Eu não achei o seu Deus, seu Valdomiro. Seu Deus, seu Valdomiro, seu Deus é caloteiro. Seu Deus é caloteiro, porque o meu não é caloteiro. O meu é o Deus da prata que serve a prata, o ouro, seu Valdomiro. O Deus da prata e do ouro. É o Deus de quem tem vergonha na cara. O Deus de quem trabalha honesto, seu Valdomiro. Tem! Tem! Gente me desafiando. Gente me desafiando. E com a Bíblia na mão ainda. Eu tô desafiando o seu Deus, o Valdemiro. <risos> Coitado. Eu não vou nem classificar, né? Eu não vou nem arrumar um adjetivo. Não vai, vai, vai pegar muito mal. Mas eu vou embora eu... São um sujeitos meio diferenciados assim, nessas coisas, entendeu? O te... Bam! The guy. Bam! The gol. Tem! Glória. Tem! I'm the hat. Ah, tem 8 milhões de reais fácil, seu Valdomiro, para ser adquirido. Tá lá dentro de sua fazenda. Dentro de sua fazenda tem lá 8 milhões. Tá lá facinho, seu Valdomiro. Não precisa você pedir ninguém, não. Tem! Tem! Bandeira. Aí entra o outro lá falando, vai pedir recurso na sua fazenda. Mostra onde é a minha fazenda, o débil mental, o demoniado. Mostra onde é, porque eu não sei não. Mostra onde é o bandido, que aí eu vou lá e pego o recurso. Ou então vamos fazer o seguinte, esse sitinho seu derrotado aí, vamos trocar na minha fazenda. Que ele gravou o vídeo lá no sítio dele. Vamos trocar esse sitinho derrotado seu cheio de pulga, na fazenda que eu tenho então. Vamos no cartório trocar se é que eu tenho fazenda. Bandido. É isso mesmo. Mas eu uso de casa de uma massa de kit uma raia. Esse aqui tchou tchou miô miô. Bande ri tchou tchou tchou. Eu vou te contar, porque aí o sujeito, não sei se você botou um vídeo lá, Valdemir, com a Bíblia na mão, esses bandidos aí. Entendeu? Deixa eu dar a paz. Não, eu só estou explicando, peraí, eu só estou explicando aqui. Olha o sujeito, vai lá pegar recurso na sua fazenda. Que fazenda? Mostra onde é minha fazenda, que eu não sei onde é, ué. E se eu tivesse também, ninguém teria a ver com isso, não. Não, mesmo. Poderia ter, mas só que eu não tenho. Olha o sujeito lá num, num pulgueiro. Pulgueiro, que negócio que ele é pulga. Né? Aqueles cachorros sardentos, meus cachorros são tudo bonitos. Cuidado com o Neucídio, né? Neucídio, que é o que vai matar pulga. Então, o sujeito lá fala, ah, Valdemir, você que vai dar água dessa vida, derrotado. Tem! Bandecai! Tem! Bandecai! Tem! 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 Bandecai! Tem! 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 Olha só! Tem! 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 The sixth stage of Terry Venable's journey along the preparatory path towards the European Championships. Not too many hazards so far, but it's definitely a voyage of discovery. Tonight, the head coach will learn more about the international claims of Tim Flowers in goal. The two newcomers in the centre of defence, Steve Howey and Neil Ruddock, and the midfield capabilities of Robert Lee and Dennis Wise. David Platt and Peter Beardsley back to compensate for lack of experience elsewhere. Three players each from Blackburn, Liverpool and Newcastle, one each from Sampdoria and Chelsea. Glenn, let's have a look at the formation. Yes, I'm interested to see uh, if they do go with a five in midfield, which I, I think they will. I think Peter Beardsley will be allowed to roam about and join in the four others, but also I think with Lee and Platt playing in that central role, uh, has got home, and I think they'll take turns in getting into the penalty area uh, and causing the Nigerians problems. So that's, that's the key thing for the game, I, I, I feel. Well, every member of tonight's Nigerian side was in their World Cup squad. All of them now earning their living in Europe, including Everton's Daniel Amakachi, with Efren Koku of Wimbledon, one of the substitutes. Their four matches in the United States showed the speed and strength in their attack, which is at full strength tonight. Rashidi Yakini, the African Footballer of the Year, supported by Amakachi, and two wider forwards capable of scoring themselves, George Finidi of Ajax and Emmanuel Amanike, who's recently moved to Portugal and plays for Sporting Lisbon. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing Yakini and Amakachi up front. I feel that Yakini uh, really didn't show his best form in the World Cup. But uh, I would say with the two centre-halves that England have got at the moment, obviously making their debuts, this is somewhere where I would think we Nigeria are going to try and to explore. But uh, Amakachi is obviously in that little translation uh, period, playing in English football, hasn't quite yet done it, but obviously this will be a, a major barometer if he does well here tonight. Well, Steve Howey hasn't yet played 100 league games. 
but here is yet another international graduate from Kevin Keegan's College of Football up at St James's Park. And he's alongside Neil Ruddock. At times, Neil perhaps has been his own worst enemy in the past, but his greater sense of responsibility rewarded by his selection tonight. Everton fans will be having mixed feelings, perhaps, about this game. They'd love to see Daniel Amakachi put on a good display. He's only scored one goal in 11 appearances in England so far. Don Howe with the glasses. Word amongst the substitutes there. You can see Matt Letizia must have been very disappointed not to keep his place. Well, the milder autumnal weather has gone. There's a bit of a chill in the air. Maybe an ally for England against opponents who've lived most of their lives in the tropics. England still unbeaten under Terry Venables. And after that first win over Denmark, the current European champions, remember, five opponents in a row, Greece, Norway, the USA, Romania, and now Nigeria, who qualified for the World Cup Finals, who played in the World Cup Finals back in the summer. So important test for Terry Venables to measure how England are progressing under his control. Wembley, as usual, immaculate self, pitch-wise. And it was Robert Lee who charged the ball down, and run on ahead of Alan Shearer as England try and set a brisk pace here Nigeria the Super Eagles playing for the first time since they lost to Italy in Boston and of course they were just a minute or so away from victory Lee Liverpool's Rob Jones oh Shearer well saved by Rufai, there's just an air of concern about that early cross for Nigeria coming to terms with their first visit to Wembley and Alan Shearer suddenly had a sight of goal, Glenn. Just the start that England wanted, obviously. I think uh, it all stemmed from Lee winning the ball from, from the Nigerians' uh, kickoff, really. But Shearer, not bad, going for the corners, but a good save from the keeper. Alan Shearer, whose last goal was actually against Barcelona in a friendly Blackburn were over there a few days ago and beat the conquerors of Manchester United so Shearer and Tim Flowers was facing Romario that just got the frame of mind right for another chance for Flowers to play in goal for England his third cap tonight very raw defence in terms of games played with Rob Jones the senior man in that respect but Terry Venables wanting to have a good look at Tim Flowers who had nothing really to do when he played against Greece back in May this is Lee Barnes Much back to him under pressure by Beardsley good sliding challenge by Amunike is Adipoju it's in the centre of their midfield where Nigeria have had to change from their World Cup first choice side Shearer with Wise trying to slide him through they look a little bit nervous the Nigerians Martin they haven't quite settled in it's early doors but uh, they look nervous side and I think if England keep hunting the ball early and pressing the ball then they've got a, a good chance of, uh, of upsetting something but there is the Shearer chance, and he's turned on that really well. But it's a good thing that that chance has come so early in the game. Wise. Jones on the run. And Roja comes across. England's throw. England, who uh, have really outpassed for long periods of the game by Romania here last month. Really looking to establish themselves in this match right from the first whistle. Barnes has come across alongside Wise at the free kick. Both centre backs have come up. 
Both outstanding in the air, of course. Rise again. Cleared by Okafor. And the counter-attacking game is very much to the liking of Nigeria. They've got a lot of pace. Their passing is often better than that missed kick by Amakachi. Tussle with Egwa Bowen. Interesting thing Shira. there is that, the, that England got caught 2v2 at the back there. And the third man came, the extra man came, but the delivery wasn't right. But they've got to watch that because they are quick on the break. Beardsley. Amunike. Well, coming back was Neil Ruddock. He's been penalised by the Swedish referee Leif Sundell. Yeah, rightly so. I think that was a, a definite foul from behind. Here's Giacchini. Flowers grateful that there was enough pace on the ball to run through to the goalkeeper. Away from Rashidi Yakini, who officially is with the Greek club Olympiakos, but there's been a parting of the ways. And Yakini would hope to put on a show tonight and perhaps attract interest from an English club. Here's Okafor, who plays in Portugal. Nigerian talent is unquestioned. The problem with the international team, with all the politics that go on in that country, it's not always possible for them to produce their best in such a climate, but they are the reigning African champions. Have they got past Italy in the World Cup in that second round goodness knows where they might have ended up Amonike Ruddock had to be snappy there good timely tackle there from Neil Ruddock uh, it's the first bit of danger that the uh, Nigerians have shown us but a, a great tackle there and that will settle him down obviously in these early stages there's a push on Shearer England have taken the free kick from Akacha and the Nigerian supporters here in a great voice and in pretty good numbers as well you'd have thought they scored a goal Martin <laughs> uh, it was wonderful skill wonderful skill and I, I think we're going to see a bit of that from the number 10 uh, I can't pronounce his name yet Martin but uh, that will come during the Akacha On news from Belfast, the big European Championship qualifying game there, and Northern Ireland already a goal down, and it's John Aldridge for the Republic. That goal after six minutes. Here's Okocha. Egbavon. There's no angle on that pass of the run behind for the goal kick. They do use the full width of the pitch, but using it so spectacularly in the centre was Augustine Okocha. 21 years old, who is basically a backup player in the World Cup, but they do believe that he will become a regular in this central midfield role. Wise looking to become a regular for England. I'm sure his inclusion designed to try and get a better supply line from the right for Alan Shearer. Yeah, it was a lovely ball from Neil Ruddock, uh, one that we've seen him do many times for Liverpool this season. And obviously Dennis has had a word with him and uh, he peeled off the defender, got in there nicely, but I think Dennis will be very disappointed with his delivery. And put him into play between Barnes and Platt. Rather given away though by Lee, who's got the chase back here, Amakachi. Bit short of support. And Robert Lee, who'd lost the ball in the first place, holding up Amakachi. And he's got the ball back, bounces off Barnes. Adipoju, the number 15. Another who got plenty of game time in the United States in the World Cup Finals. It's a long time, four and a half months since Nigeria last played. It's a defeat that they found very hard to handle as they were so close to knocking out Italy. Lee. Barnes, now Wise, more coming from the right than 
on the left for England so far, with Graham Lasso rather being blocked off by George Finidi on the far side. Here's Wise. Barnes and Beardsley joining Shearer in the centre. Good work by Wise. Shearer fighting for the cross. Barnes with a chance to keep the danger on, but it's comfortable in the end for the Nigerian captain, Peter Rufai. Great cross by, by Dennis Wise there. He's shifted the ball, he shifted his body as well. He's done the trick on the defender. Superb delivery. I think uh, it was just a, a shame, really, that Shearer couldn't have had a run at it. It was a standing jump and couldn't get the power. But at least we've hit the byline for the first time uh, tonight. And uh, if we can get it out to Dennis and he can do that, reproduce that, we might be in for a good night. Well, the bookmakers making it 5-1 to one against the Nigerian victory. One or two Nigerians might have invested some money in those odds. There's a group of players, they certainly radiated a very confident message when they were training here last night. One or two nervy moments, as Glenn pointed out, in the opening seconds at Wembley. They won't be the first nation to have experienced that, but one or two signs now that they're starting to settle. With Amakachi for Amunike. Big frame of Yakini in the centre. Going for it here! And very nearly giving Nigeria the lead, Rashidi Yakini. Platt. Shearer can't get away. Okuchukwu cut it out. Here's Barnes. Well, ten minutes gone. And chances at both ends. Well, again, Amiyuki, I think it is, number 11, got behind the defence, just like Dennis had uh, done at the other end a minute ago. But uh, a great chance for Yakini. He'd, di he'd be disappointed if he didn't finish that, Martin. And this is how it happened. Cross beyond the Flowers, who just stuck out a foot and made the save. Second goal for the Republic of Ireland, a fantastic start for them in Belfast. Adding to the opener from John Aldridge, a second from Roy Keane. Iroha. Well, there's a marvellous atmosphere here, and it's not often that visiting supporters uh, so volatile but the rhythm of the Nigerian support gathering momentum just as the football of the team is Yakini, little Amaniki won't get there they're definitely beginning to grow in confidence haven't they they looked a little bit nervous early doors but they've settled down and uh, they're proving that they're going to be a, a handful for England's defence tonight that's for sure I'd like to see Ruddock and Howie just a little bit tighter together there's a, there's a big gap in between the two of them and that's understandable early doors it's an examination now of what sort of shield they're going to get in front of them, whether Patton Lee, as you pointed out at the start, Glenn, whether Patton Lee can share that responsibility of anchoring the midfield successfully. Yeah, it seems at the moment as if David Platt is going to be playing deeper. Um, there's no two ways about that. He's trying to pick up the ball from the back four and, and try and shield a little bit. Obviously, that's not his natural game, but it does allow Lee to get forward. It was a game, of course, that he was forced into at Juventus by the coach Trapattoni, and he hated it. <laughs> well, that, his instinct is to get into that penalty area and score goals, and, and his record speaks for itself. But uh, at the moment, it, it looks as if he's playing a deeper role tonight. Alcocha. Not frightened of having possession on the edge of his own area there and picking a pass under a little bit of pressure from Barnes beautifully that was wonderful skill wonderful vision you know under pressure superb skill and here's Amakachi it's the seventh time that England have met African opposition only the second time here at Wembley England yet to be beaten by a nation from that huge continent Cameroon game here in 1991. Away by Howie this time, but for Cameroon it was a, a bitter night weather wise and also a bitter time for them with disputes over 
bonuses. And they certainly didn't do African football any justice, but Nigeria with a bit more optimism here, although they have to defend the cross. Good header away by Iroha. Wise and Beardsley trying to win it back for England. That is on hand as well. Shearer has caught offside. Flag is up, the referee allows the game to go on. Well done the referees, he's done, he made a good decision there because it could have stopped the game and the Nigerians had the ball so he's continuing the play. Adipoju. Equivon. Now Kocha. He's trying to pull the strings in midfield. Is Okocha with Amaniki already showing well on the left. He's got some wonderful touches, hasn't he, uh, Okocha? He's, he's the hub of the side. He's bringing the defence into the attack. Everything going through him, but he's got some beautiful skills and he's not afraid to show them either. Amakachi. Trying the early shot and it was dipping on Flowers in the end. He had to just smother it behind for the corner. I think he caught him a little bit unawares. I think, I, I think Tim thought that he was never going to shoot from there. He had a, an overlapping flower on his right. Uh, and to be fair, Tim McCutcheon, he just uh, saw the whites of the goals and went for it. Look, and in the end, Tim did well to actually get his hand to it. And Maniki's corner back his way by the head of Platt and that's straightforward for Flowers it's an important save for England but uh, very important for obviously for Flowers it, it, that settled his nerves a little bit um, goalkeeper loves to get involved quickly and uh, it, it's been a little bit of time since he's uh, had a touch of the ball well, Terry Venables has appreciated the postponement of Premiership play last weekend. Not so much to prepare the players for this particular match, though that is important, but to get across his own general philosophy of how he wants the game to be played at this level. Certainly a narrowness to the midfield when the opposition have the ball. Yes, the Nigerians at the moment seem to be able to open the play from one side to the other quite easily. Uh, and, they're, and they're joining in, the white players are joining in late with late runs. And it is causing England a problem. And, and they're creating things in and around our penalty box. But from the England's point of view, I want to see Peter Beardsley on the ball. We've gone 20 minutes into the game and I haven't seen enough of Peter on the ball. And uh, if we get that going, I think we can, you know, we can set the foundation down and, uh, and open the Nigerians up. Shearer. Lee. And the approach who came across the number 15. Just as a sign when uh, Graham Lasseau was pushing on down the left hand side for virtually the first time, hoping to be involved in that attack. Now he's got to get back to defend against George Finidi. It was a good supply line for Nigeria in their World Cup games. The problem for, for Graham at the moment, Graham Lasseau, is that. Fanini is a problem to him. He's, he's searching out the back of uh, Graham Lasso and it's stopping him getting forward and joining. So it's going to be interesting to see what Terry does uh, being on the bench side if they get a, a call onto him, what he actually wants him to do. Ruddock with the header. Iroha. Oh, Yakini's coming onto this one with great power in everything except the shot. Even then, Flowers fumbled it. But England hesitant. Positive running by Rashidi Yakini. Yeah, he's had a couple of chances that have uh, been too easy for my liking. That was really no danger and uh, should have been smothered. But uh, again, you know, Tim Flowers came out of his hands. He won't. He'll be disappointed with uh, with that save. Here we see it again. It's a little bit of a, a lucky bounce for him, but he's got on to the ball, squeezed in there. And Neil Ruddock does well sweeping up here. Look, he's just there covering the danger. Uh, and kept his head well. But they're certainly opening England up at the moment. And Yakini there getting between the two central defenders to get his shot in. Well, it's a testing time 
for those two debutants in the middle at the back and Nigeria enjoying the Wembley playing surface and a far greater share of possession at the moment. Howie, now Wise. Actually giving him the advantage, there was certainly a bit of holding by Aroha. Chukwu getting in. Platt. Jones, Shearer showing for it. Jones looking for help closer at hand. Platt. Feel his authority as captain is important at the moment. The senior players have tried to sort out one or two things here for England. Adipoju. For Yakini to feed. I think we're just looking to go forward too early, Martin. I think we need to, at this stage, they've had more possession than us, and we need to just pass a little bit around them and, and get our confidence going. We're going forward too early, and this is this little build up now. We're passing it to each other, and uh, we will start to control the game if we begin to play like that. Lee. The wise. Only Shearer to attack it, but he's there. Barnes behind him, back in again, off the head of Iroha, Amaniki, and it looks set for Alan Shearer in the centre. That was a super cross from Dennis Wise again, uh, he's got down the outside a few times now and it's a super cross, a great save by the goalkeeper, he's just got a touch to it I think to take it away from Alan Shearer, but again if we can get to the byline I, I feel that we can get some, some joy from, from this right hand side. Barnes. Beardsley. Even going through the centre, Lasso was wanting it on the left. It almost ran on for Robert Lee. It did, but he wasn't quite aware of the ricochet. But look at Rufai reaching up here. Just a touch, a merest of touches. He's just got a faint touch on it to take it away from Allen. That could have been 1-0 one, one up to England now. Cheer is in now. It's a great header down for Lee. Best chance uh, of the game for England, and it was uh, a replica of, of what happened against Romania. It was a very similar run from, from Robert Lee off a Shearer header, but on the other side of the penalty area. And I think he's, uh, he's going to be disappointed that he hasn't hit the target there. He might have damaged himself in the stretch. Robert Lee, if he's going to have treatment, it's going to happen off the pitch. As you can see here, Shearer's just come off the back of the defender there and he's laid a lovely ball in there, yeah. I think he was at full stretch, he may have done some uh, stomach muscles there. The plastic men are coming! The World Wrestling Federation... Survival Series, baby! ...is coming. It's gonna be brutal! Five-man tag teams will strive to survive the ultimate test of strength. No one will be able to help you! It's an elimination contest. If you lose, you're out. I'm mad. I'm really mad. There's championship action. The title's on the line. Sponsored by Atmosphere. The Survivor Series coming soon to Sky Sports. After a hundred years, you can now enjoy John Smith's draft in a can. It's got a widget for that just served by the landlord taste. Oh, I'm not doing this. Well, don't you like the beer? Well, I like the beer, it's just not my material. I'm sorry, I am not prepared to compromise my hard man of comedy image. I mean, why should I? Widget, it's got a widget. A lovely widget. A widget it has got. At Radio Rentals, you can option to own one of a great range of Olivetti personal computers. Dad, you're quite a that. No. So, whether you're a beginner, want something for the whole family, or even want to set up a home office, there's a personal computer package for you. And now, at Radio Rentals, you can option to own an Olivetti multimedia package. There's no deposit, full service backup, and with the final payment, it's yours. Stay contented. Get Radio Rented. After every shave, new Lynx System Aftershave Gel with two active moisturizers takes care of your skin.
Looking for great value toys? The Jolly Giant has thousands and thousands of great value prices. The Jolly Giant Toy Superstores, also in Lewis's and most are in Owens. Crisp wafer biscuit, delicious Cadbury's flake, covered in Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate. So, whatever the time, when it's that time, it's time out time. Ooh, from Cadbury. Time out! The 1995 Nissan Primera is such a pleasure to drive that occasionally. It likes to go for a drive all on its own. Can you get this kind of enjoyment out of driving? You can with a Nissan. The 1995 Primera. to the name of the name of Steve McManaman to the list of England internationals now. It keeps this club understanding going. A fourth Liverpool player now involved in the game. McManaman who owes his chance to an excellent start to the season. What Terry's done there Martin is he's brought uh, Steve McManaman over to the right a natural position that he's been playing similar for Liverpool and he's let Dennis go in there and float and play the, the Robert Lee role so that's going to be interesting that won't be too foreign to Dennis he, he's played that with the club McManaman who is young but of course played here in an FA Cup final successfully for Liverpool back in 1992 McManaman's 22 now now he's just a few months older really isn't the uh, sort of England personnel that you would have picked perhaps before the season began to be playing an international in November but opportunity beckons Terry's also going to find out about these players Martin as well which is which is good experience for them Platt Beardsley it's his first international this season of course he missed the other two with injury McManaman Matt and Shearer in the centre. Playing by Rufo. We'll get a quick word on that Robert Lee injury from Nick Collins. Nick. Martin, Robert Lee's got a suspected fracture of the left hand. He twisted it as he fell and the Nigerian defender trodden it, so he's gone for an X-ray. And incidentally, uh, Terry Venables sent Steve McManaman on for his first cap with the words, one-on-ones, take them on. Right, just see here how the hand was trodden on there. It's quite clear, the defender Okafor. Yes, it's been a little bit unfortunate there, Robert. Uh, that was a mistake, you know, it was accidental. And uh, just a bit unfortunate in the night. Amakachi. Call him the Buffalo in Nigeria. For those sort of runs, really. They've got a lot of strength for two strikers for Nigeria, that's for sure. Yukini and Amakachi, obviously, are very strong. Uh, they will not be out physical tonight, that's for sure. Looking at the size of them all over the park. But... Um, I've been quite impressed with, with their, their last third play. Some of the teams that have come here at Wembley have been a little bit you know, poor in the last third, but uh, they certainly very inventive, very skillful in the last third. 16 minutes to go to half-time. Okocha <laughs> obviously trying to impart some swerve and dip. And got it absolutely wrong. Perhaps they're not that skillful in the last third. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Teddy Sheringham also amongst the England substitutes tonight. It's been another goal north of the border, an equaliser for Russia, Radchenko. Lasso, who of course has provided crosses for goals regularly since he was brought into the England setup by Terry Venables, but just hasn't been in a position to carry that on tonight. Nigeria, whether by design or by accident, have curbed his threat. Beardsley also hasn't been able to impose himself as yet. But finding it hard going at times in midfield. Given to Nigeria by this very calm referee, Leif Sundell, who Norwich fans might remember took charge of the game in Munich when Norwich beat Bayern. Joe Royal, who's been on the managerial merry-go-round over the past few days, with Willie Donachy, the new team in charge at Everton. Watching in particular, Daniel Amakachi. What will they make of him so far? I would think so, Martin. Yes, of course. Uh, a new player for him as well to watch. One of his own players now, but uh, he, he wants to see what he's up to. And uh, at the moment, I think, you know, the two of them up front have caused him enough problems to suggest that they could score tonight. And, and, uh, well, you're going to say maybe that. win. Well, the way they're playing, you can smell that they could actually go on and win the game. But uh, I just feel England have not really got up to full steam yet and if we do I feel that we can we can still win this game. Nil nil after half an hour. Yakini's had two chances. Namakanchi's looked sharp and Monique busy on the left hand side. England doing their best to support Alan Shearer. It hasn't been easy. Ruddock, who loves this ball from left to right. Of course, McManaman knows all about it. Beardsley got to McManaman. England well represented in the middle. Beardsley. Back for Howie. Now Barnes. Wise coming across the edge of the area. Barnes letting fly. Interesting there in that little spell, Peter Beersy played two first-time balls and I feel this is in the centre of the midfield areas, this is where we haven't played early enough, I just feel they're taking too many touches in that middle third and uh, Peter's just, just played two early balls, given McManaman the space to time and time to run at people and I think uh, if Peter can continue that, then obviously I think Steve McManaman could be in for a good night. Barnes, who's continued his excellent start to the season when he surprised so many with his improved physical condition Jones covering oh, and Flaus almost deposited that and Okocha just veered away from the Nigerian midfield man Beardsley now Lasso on the hunt down the left hand side Good ball from Barnes. And Shearer coming in. Well, with Dennis Wise, you're talking about top quality service from either side. That's right, Martin. It's left or right foot. He's, he's naturally right or left footed. And it doesn't matter to Dennis what side he is. He, he, he was a little bit disappointed he'll be with that cross because he had the time to deliver it. But uh, again, it's the, the best chances that have come from Wise's little crosses. And again, it's... Uh, it's getting in behind their defence is what we're finding difficult at the moment. When we have done that, we're obviously creating the chances. Well, Dennis Wise, who uh, had a chance at international level under Graham Taylor, but after a few games in 1991 was rather discarded. If you read the newspapers, you uh, would believe he was a surprise selection for tonight, but... I think it, it, it's horses for courses in terms of where Alan Shearer perhaps well, the best can be drawn out of Shearer. Well, I think if you analyse this first half, Dennis has, uh, has been uh, at the end of most of the positive things for England tonight. That's a fine ball by Yakini. 
for Amanike. Who fires it across. In the end, it looked more threatening than it was. It was pretty comfortable for Flowers to deal with, coming at the right height. And others in the middle for Nigeria would have hoped for something cut back away from the goalkeeper. Platt, winning his 50th cap, of course, tonight being the captain. Here he is. Wise. Right back up in the air by Okafor. Kamakachi, who comes deep to collect and is prepared to run at defenders. Got it moved towards him. Well, it was a marvellous effort by Okocha. Little change of feet, a little shimmy. And the shot happily for England across the face of the goal and beyond the far post. Yes, great skill, great change of feet there. And uh, it's been very unfortunate that the spin of the ball has just taken it wide of the post. But it was, again, it was a dangerous break from the Nigerians. Amakachi just uh, staying in behind our, our midfield players and catching us on the break. This was the earlier incident, which wasn't as threatening Yeah, I think the one that's just happened. He tried to catch him on the, uh, on the near post, but obviously Tim, an experienced goalkeeper uh, like that, is never going to get caught in the near post from that angle. But the warning signs are there for England when we are attacking. It's when we're on the attack and we lose it that they can break so quickly. Lasso, Beardsley, difficult height to control. Adipoju. There's Amakachi again in that deeper position where they're picking him out. He's moving on through the centre now. The problem they're causing our two centre-halves is, is, is the deeper runs. The runs are coming from deep and we can't play offside on them, but we're from, the two centre-halves are in a standing position and they're being caught on a run, and it's a, it's a danger. Uh, it's one that we've got to sort out. But when Amakachi drops off like that, who's going to pick him up? That's the problem. We haven't, we haven't got that ints or, or anyone holding in that in position. You know, Platy wants to get involved in the play and uh, there is a hole developing there. Was Beersley finding McManaman. Beersley again. Lasso, he and Shearer, the only two players to start all the games under Terry Venables. Barnes. And that was one of the uh, reckless types of challenges by Egwa Vaughan. But in the end, cost Nigeria their place in the World Cup. It's his foul on Benarivo of Italy that led to that Baggio penalty that decided the game in Boston. I felt that was a, a prime example of why we brought that new rule in. I thought the referee might have been sterner. Very much so. I think that if, if ever I've seen a tackle from behind there and he hasn't played the ball, then uh, I feel he should have been booked for that. John Sheridan with a third for the Republic of Ireland. Northern Ireland who seem to be developing nicely under Brian Hamilton. But what a shot to their systems. With one or two alarms for Terry Venables and Brian Robson here at Wembley. But it's still nil-nil. Yakini just a little wrong-footed by Amakachi that time. The two of them having a post-mortem as the game goes on with McManaman. George Finidi. Egravon. Now Adipoju, who earns his living in Spain with Santander. Amakachi. It's only Yakini in the penalty area for Nigeria. Hatcher was waiting on the edge of the area, but John Barnes was there to intercept. Platt. Shearer. Wise coming to his left. Shearer setting off. Platt. Now, can England pick a route through here, but Platt saw an opportunity to shoot. He hasn't had many of those. 
I was so unfortunate there, Martin. Peter Beardsley was, was in acres of space on the edge of the penalty area, and I think if Peter had been on the ball himself, he would have found him. Look, if you see Peter Beardsley just in that little hole there, it would have been tucked inside to him, I think uh, we'd have seen the, the first goal of the evening. Beardsley was clearly onside, but not spotted by David Platt. That's the sort of areas that we need Peter in on the ball rather than being up front. We need to get him on the ball in them areas and he will he will open the defence up. And here he is on the ball now. Wise. Well, Nigeria who were robust to stay the least in the World Cup. And Egwavon again is the defender lacking the necessary discipline to do his job properly. It's a free kick here for Terry Venable's team. Had a few extra days England this time to rehearse the set plays. What will it bring? Platt, David Platt, it brings a goal for the captain to celebrate his 50th international. Yes, yeah, great, great position for England, a free kick for England. They've worked at it, how he spun round, round the back. A good ball whipped in from, from Dennis there. Great movement to lose their markers. And uh, a, a superb finish from David Platt. We've seen him do it time and time again, this sort of run. Well, it's an amazing goal record, isn't it? Every time he puts one in the net, we pointed out that this is his 24th in 50 games for his country, for David Platt. The marking was very poor there because, uh, you know, it could have been Platt or Ruddock that could have stuck that in, but a super time to, uh, to score just before half-time. But more importantly, the fact was that we really didn't have the reins on the game. Hopefully we can get that now. Well, just to put it into some context for you, for Platt, the great Jeff Hurst, 24 goals in 49 appearances, that was his career record, and Platt... Well, only fractionally off that pace, and he's doing it from midfield. Egglebock, put in by Howard. So important for this England side with just a little bit of a makeshift look about it. Changes forced upon Terry Venables for all sorts of reasons. But as we've been stressing, it's all part of the learning experience for the coach to look at players and see whether they can handle it at this level. Well, we know David Platt can. But let's give Dennis Wise a pat on the back. He's been looking the most likely provider throughout the first half. And, well, we won't accuse Glenn for any bias here. Because no, I think Dennis, Dennis has delivered. Dennis has delivered tonight. You know, so far in the first half, he's been our most productive player. Amaniki. Well, this brash Nigerian approach, the confidence that they have in attack now they'll need all that self-belief a goal behind it'll be interesting to see how they respond now because uh, they've been shown a lot of skill a lot of flair going forward but uh, it's characters now going to be tested as a side and uh, we'll see what they're made of it's their old problem Glenn they've given away a free kick pretty unnecessarily and paid a heavy price for it yeah that's right there was no real danger we weren't really getting to the byline uh, Graham Lasso it was a 50-50 challenge a bit rash but uh, from set plays, you always think England uh, are going to do something. Uh, over the years, they've done it time and time again. Uh, and this is where the African nations do go asleep a little bit. Well, England caught sleeping there between uh, Ruddock and Barnes. Not a place to lose possession in international football, but Wise sorts it out. McManaman. Well, Shearer was trying to get free on the right-hand side with every touch that Steve McManaman took more likely it was going to be that Shearer would be covered by his marker of the Chukwu Platt oh, Rob Jones has got some room to run into here and in the end a little spin on the ball as it dropped just unsettled his attempt to control but 
Again, the club understanding suiting England with Ruddock firing it away to the right-hand side with that strong left foot of his. That's right, Rob Jones was on his way. He knew that Neil could, could deliver that ball. Uh, just a little bit unfortunate that uh, there was a little bit of rain, a bit of grease on the top, and it's just took it out too far. Must be comforting for McManaman coming on too to have Rob Jones in close proximity on that right-hand side. Yeah, that's going to make him feel at home, and uh, I think that's something Terry's going to have to have a word with. Uh, although we're not chasing the game quite as much now, 1-0 up, but the two full-backs have been very quiet on the ball. They've had to do a defending job against the two wingers, but uh, they've got to link up at times a little bit more and give us a, a few more options going forward. Clearance by Okafor. Flag goes up. As we move into the uh, 45th minute. And the mood much better from England's point of view. Yeah, I think it certainly calmed everyone down, that's for sure, Martin. Uh, we were getting a little bit uh, reckless in our passing. But it's calmed us down now, and uh, if we can get into half-time and reshape things, I think we'll have a good second half. Wise. And England winning the ball uh, further forward at the moment. Barnes. The downside of the first half has been the injury situation. And now it's Graham Lasso who needs the help of Dave Butler and Alan Smith. Problem that around the hip region and maybe a damaged rib. I think he just, I think he just picked up a knot there on, on the hip area, and uh, he seems to be rubbing off. He's okay, but this at this stage, you know, just before half time, they'll obviously just sort of try and nurse him into to half time and see how he is. Stuart Pearce in particular will be wondering how he is, whether he might require Pearce, of course, came on against Romania in place of Rob Jones and made a good fist of playing it right back. Pearce couldn't quite reach it, Platt's pass. Yeah, it was a great pass from uh, David Platt, great run from Beardsley this time, and this time David saw him, but uh, opening him up. Well, England go off at half-time, better place than seemed likely in the opening half an hour, and they've got yet again to thank David Platt for that. Heading in, Dennis Wise's free kick after Nigeria threatened on a number of occasions a couple of good opportunities for Yakini. England have lost Robert Lee along the way. Plenty for Terry Venables to talk to his team about during the settling in period. We should point out that with Steve McManaman coming on for Robert Lee, that's seven changes from the side that played here against Romania. And what? does give genuine cause for concern. The word from the Football Association is that England won't have another international until March, which is an awful long time when you're trying to build a side as Terry Venables is looking to do. But then Glenn Hoddle, the club managers need the players. Exactly. <laughs> I agree with that, Martin. 100%. <laughs> no, it's interesting that Nigeria haven't played also for, for four months. So David Platt's goal, the difference between the two sides. England taking full advantage from uh, an excellent set piece. But in the free flow of the football, there's been plenty of Nigeria to enjoy here. And they will surely come out for the second half, feeling that they are still very much in this international. Jones. Here's McManaman. Dennis Wise got in front of his defender, but too far forward for the liking of the linesman. The flag's gone up for offside. Yeah, it was a good position Dennis took up there, but it's interesting that obviously Dennis and Peter Beersy now have just been told, go and float. Both of them have, have got a free role, really, to play around the uh, Shearer, and I think that's going to cause them a, a few problems. It'll be... I'm sure a number of armchair critics who feel they would like to see England play with more out-and-out -out strikers than just Alan Shearer. It's been often the way since Terry took over. So, uh, Teddy Sheringham did have a game against the United States. Here's the so. Your view on that, Glenn? 
My view on there really is that uh, over the years when we've played two up front, uh, they get man for man marked and you get talented players facing their own goals too many times. This system allows good players to get turned uh, and, to, and to pass shorter balls to them. Lasso well forward. But for any system, however Terry wants to play, he's got to, have, he's got to try and find out the correct players to work that system. Uh, I believe he has got the players to play this way. <laughs> Neil Ruddock <laughs> settling to life out in the international spotlight. Christmas coming a bit early for certain sections of the crowd. But a crowd here, I'm sure, wondering what's going to unfold in the second half. Like some visitors to Wembley and international matches, Nigeria do seem to have some clout further forward. So we suggest that a 1 0 lead for England might not settle proceedings here. And this error of vulnerability that Nigeria do have defensively, which is more a tactical thing than a physical thing, they're certainly uh, big, robust players at the back, and Egwabon. It's the one who's having the most grief as far as the referee is concerned. Another free kick given against him, and Dennis Wise has a word. Flat. Shearer through the centre. Into his feet. McManaman. England filling the centre. McManaman's cross. Bisley! Great effort from Peter Beardsley there. Got across the front of his defender. Uh, it, was a, it was a difficult ball to play from McManaman because it was so short the distance. But a lovely little flick and uh, a little bit lower, that would have gone in the top corner. But we're, we're dominating the, the early period again of the second half. There's the Dennis Wise uh, foul. Yeah, Dennis, you've got to get your weights done. How would you want injury list? Glenn, the last thing you want is to see him <laughs> clattered like that. I was relieved to see him get up, Martin, I must say. Shearer with a good touch to Beersley. Shearer carrying out the return pass. After Chukwu steering it out of play. Nick Collins has got some news for us. We'll just wait for a moment with England having the throw with Beersley. Now Jones. Nigerian fans loving every flick and back heel. But the team, the Super Eagles, have got to do it in an area where they can hurt England. Platt. Let's hear from Nick Collins. The main concern in the England dressing room at the half time is about Nigeria hitting England uh, on the break, especially uh, since they've had to reshuffle the midfield since the loss of Robert Lee. Lee, incidentally, is in a bit of pain, but mighty relieved that nothing's broken. Martin. Thanks very much, Nick. Sometimes, talking to Terry Venables, you feel he would rather have a game or two with some points at stake to really assess how his team building is going on but when you see some of the results like Paul Wales had to endure in the qualifiers today well England's automatic qualification for the final stages should be mightily appreciated that's what's making it a very strange job for Terry at the moment because there isn't that extra edge of winning the points to qualify for something at the moment but uh, I'm sure when, when results go against you, that uh, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> well, it's not going against England here so far. Five minutes into the second half. The goal just before half-time from David Platt's header. Finidi. Nike has hurt Nigeria a free kick. And players travelling into London from all over Europe. One or two 
Nigerian base, they're mostly the reserve players. They've fitted in a little bit of sightseeing while they've been here. But this is what they really came for. It's Wise's pass for Beardsley. I think the defender, Okafor, was probably quite happy if Peter Beardsley was going to shoot from that angle. The odds were against him, but Wise opening Nigeria up again. Great ball from Dennis, yeah, some, some terrific work from Alan Shearer. A lost cause, the ball looked as if it was going out, he's, he's kept it in play, but Dennis uh, there. Dennis has uh, kept his head and he's, he's, he's really played the ball on the back of the last defender. And you can't ask for more than that in football. Peter just had to go a little bit wide uh, for his finish. But a good move, a sort of move that they were hitting us uh, in the first half. Right? Amaniki, Kocha, Wise's tackle. I think it's fair to say that this is Dennis Wise's best international appearance so far. He did score on his first appearance. That was in Turkey, a crucial winning goal in a qualifying match more than three years ago. Beardsley. Well, I don't know if there is such an expression as a green wash, but that's what's happening in Belfast. Four now for the Republic. Andy Townsend adding his name to the list of the scorers. John Aldridge, Niall Quinn and John Sheridan got the three in the first half. Lovely play from Okocha. Early cross, Amanike. Lack of inches with the handicap there. And Rob Jones read the path of the ball well for England as he was required to do. There was some lovely inventive play there by the Nigerians, but uh, fair dues to Rob Jones. Great covering on the back post. He left his spare man behind him, the winger, out wide and, and covered the centre halves. Terrific defensive play. Fenidi with the corner. Headed back in by Egwavon. McManaman. Oka Chukwu took him out. Oka Chukwu plays for Fenerbahce in Turkey, where he's had a very in and out season. I think you put a quick no entry sign up there, Martin. <laughs> he looked like a defender who didn't really believe in his own footballing abilities to solve that particular problem, so he took the physical route. I think he looked at the younger legs he was up against. Manaman with the interplay with Shearer. That was clever play by Steve McMenamin there, forcing the corner. He laid, laid his body down and committed himself, but uh, committed the defender to take the ball and knew they had nowhere to go, and uh, England have got a, a valuable corner. Thinking of working it short. Brains racing there, Wise and Beardsley. Short it goes. McManaman on the edge of the area. Wise. Offside in the centre. That was an excellent work corner, you know, because Dennis's run, as soon as he touched the ball, it, it was obviously practice on the on the training ground because of the run that he made in, in behind the defenders. And look, great position in the penalty area. It was just that uh, two English players had gone offside, which was a shame. Tonight's attendance, just over 37,000. Plenty of support for the Super Eagles. Thousands of Nigerians living over here who found their way to Wembley. Shearer, Beardsley, was furthest forward and just sensed he hesitated, wondering quite what was the best course of action there. It's a mistake by Finidi, who was lucky that his teammates bailed him out. Amoniki for Amakachi. Adepoju. Matt using his seniority there over Ruddock. Bikini. Bring it behind the so for Finidi. Ekwavon distracting the defenders. Finidi still on the ball. Okocha. 
Well, they made space for the shot splendidly. England stood firm. Although there haven't been any real alarms in the second half, that's not to say there won't be in the time that remains. No, again, you see that uh, Okocha, the number 10, uh, he has got so, so many tricks up his sleeve, you don't quite know when he's going to release the ball. And uh, he's been a handful for England all night. If he can get in the, in the last third a little bit more for Nigeria, then he could cause problems. Here's Okocha again. Nicely weighted pass for Adipoju, who recognised the chance to move on. Yakini. He's big, he's powerful, he's a handful, and he's still going. Amakachi. Amunike. And deflected behind for a Nigerian corner. Yakini's trying to bulldoze his way through, really, through the centre. You'd have thought he would have pulled the trigger on that one because uh, centre of goals, anything could happen on a greasy surface, but uh, they're starting to play a little bit again. Kocha's caught. Just too high for Egrabon. Who wasn't in the original squad for this game, but Nigeria had one or two injuries and they... Brought him back. Well, as a sight to gladden the hearts of the Wimbledon fans and uh, a good few at Norwich and Bournemouth as well. Effa Nakoku. Waiting to come on for what would be his second international appearance. Wise kept the ball in well for England. He's cropping up all over the place. <laughs> Benedi, so wise. It's a wonderful Okocha. dummy. Wonderful dummy line. <laughs> he didn't even touch the ball. Super play. Okocha again. Good little spell this for Nigeria. Yakini. The sharp end of it. Needs help now. Yakini's goals that guided Nigeria to the African Championship earlier this year. That together with qualifying for the World Cup finals for the very first time and playing here at Wembley, it's been a splendid year for Nigeria. It's been a difficult one for England, but it will be as the time Terry Venables took over the reins, but fans having to watch while the World Cup took shape without English participation. Okocha. Amunike. Calmly done by Howie. Barnes was pressed. England came up with the answer and look at the room that Beersley's got here. Not quite enough strength in the pass to get it beyond Okuchukwu who's still shadowing Shearer this is the Ajax winger George Finidi and this is the Blackburn left back Graham Lasso. Egrabon still England lead we've had an hour at Wembley Adepoju Manaman doing the defending but it's with Iroha. Now he's gone across. The young man who began in Newcastle's first team as a striker. Even started this season amongst the uh, substitutes. It's the best spell that Nigeria have had this half. Uh, the last five minutes they've controlled, started to control again. Uh, but the, the, the end product just isn't quite there at the moment. But it's interesting they're taking Yukini off there. Martin. Well, the two main strikers have gone off. And on come uh, Epanekoku, his second cap in Nigeria. Born in England, of course, but of Nigerian parentage. And the French based player, Victor Ipepa, who uh, plays for Monaco. Yes, I don't know too, I don't know too much about Ipepa. Uh, I think he's gone there since I've uh, left Monaco there, Martin. 
But it's interesting to see they've made a, a double change of uh, the strikers and maybe they're thinking, well, fresh legs up there might just open something up for them because they've had control in midfield. Now he's header. There has been a question mark about Amakachi's fitness. He missed Everton's last match. And he seemed quite happy to go off, but Yakini was uh, somewhat surprised and not too keen to go at all. Well, Koku has settled in very well to life in London with Wimbledon. Here's it, Pepper. He was on target in the French First Division last weekend. And the substitute found himself in a, a terrific position to swing across in there and he chose to pull it back but it wasn't really on there was too many white shirts for that it was a good position though that he, he found himself in Amadou Shuaibu the new Nigerian coach is his first match in charge he's certainly offering a positive philosophy here Nigeria chasing the game very proud of the fact that they uh, rarely fail to score in international matches. And we'll see what they've got left here. Ruddock. The quite a coup for Howie and Ruddock if England do get a clean sheet. Against talented attackers. Wise. So, Shira just pulling off the back post, but in the end, it was a shorter ball that Wise went torpedoing at, and it hit the stanchion at the back of the goal on the outside. Great effort from uh, from Dennis there. He's peeled off the defender. A little bit of a flat uh, cross from the side this time, and little Dennis has got a, a lot of space in the penalty area there. Unusually, in the centre of goals there, and uh, diving header. Unfortunate for Dennis that that hasn't gone in and for England. But there's been one or two examples then of more mobility from England in that area. Beersley had that header that he uh, fastened on to earlier in the half and now Wise not too far away. Yes, they've definitely got across the front of the defenders and that's always a problem for defenders uh, with Shearer peeling off to the back post. That's a lovely touch from Shearer to Beersley. in there and the ball unfortunately for England and for Alan Shearer just looped up for a comfortable catch for Rufai yeah it was a wonderful uh, created chance from Peter Beardsley quick for the change of feet a great vision he just looks up sees where Alan Shearer is peeled off the defender and what a superb cross good defending from the fullback he's come across there and put uh, Alan Shearer under immense pressure as you see this, it looks as if Shearer's favourite here, and he's just done enough to put him off. Yes, that's the uh, often reckless right-back, Egwavon, who gave away the free-kick from which England scored. Alan Shearer being uh, checked out. But we, it's interesting this half part, and we've seen, we've seen Peter Beards and Dennis Wise on the ball more this half than, than in the first half. And uh, they're, they're starting to create things. Although Nigeria have had long spells of possession, they haven't created quite the same as England had. Saturday, from the wild depths of South Africa's Sun City, comes 87 reasons to be watching Sky One. Miss World, 1994. Oh. Special guests, Blair Underwood, plus supermodels Naomi Campbell and Iman. Do you need any more reasons? Follow the fortunes of Miss UK at Miss World, 7 o'clock Saturday, Sky One. 84 pence for Lambrusco Light. It's a candlelit dinner with sparkle tonight. Farmhouse Cheddar has a pound off the price. Just what you need with two hungry mice. 
Is it gas mark three for six hours or more? No, dear, it's four hours, I'm sure. Maybe it's cheaper to shop around. These turkeys are guaranteed the cheapest in town. Ooh. This is good value, full-bodied as well. Are you still talking about that waiter, Miguel? <laughs> Price check savings at Summerfield and Gateway. The 1995 Nissan Primera is such a pleasure to drive that occasionally it likes to go for a drive all on its own. kind of enjoyment out of driving? You can with a Nissan. The 1995 Primera. Mmm, 16. 17. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Oh, 24. Eight. To play the National Lottery, all you have to do is pick six numbers and mark them off on a play slip. Seven. Was that seven or eleven? Seven. Pay one pound, look after your ticket, and an estimated five million pounds could be yours. It's you. It could be you. A lot of showmanship in running a restaurant and a hotel. Everything has to look perfect. We try to make people welcome here. They, they do come back. But you get nights where you just do get dirty. She says, darling, what have you done? I said, trying to earn a living. She said, what, all over your jacket? I used to use another powder. Take it out and you think, no, it's not right, it's not right. And that's when I discovered Ariel. With tough food stains like red wine sauce, some powders may only get it nearly clean. But Ariel Ultra tackles it better to get it really clean. I love listening to the comments of the guests because I feel very, very proud when it's all been finished. It's sort of a little miracle every day. Ariel, not just nearly clean, but really clean. The new Compact Presario is a home computer that has everything you need to run your own business, including a built-in answer phone and fax. It also comes with CD-ROM to bring interactive learning to your children. Entertainment to you. The new from Compact. Tissier there, just masked by the linesman. I'm sure Teddy sharing him as well. Terry Venables having been forced into that change in the first half with the injury to Robert Lee. Sticking with what he's had since then. McManaman who came off. The triple hits it straight back to Steve McManaman. Shearer can attack this one, but he did so unfairly. He's not happy with the foul given against him, but a foul it is. A little bit harsh there, Martin. I think uh, Alan was rightly so going for the ball. He's peeled off the defender, got a bit of space in between him and the defender. He's only jumped for the ball, and really, should, England should be taking the corner now. Not a free kick to Nigeria. Interesting, you're talking about Matthew Letizia. I feel that uh, if there was ever, ever a game for his talents and his skills to shine, it would have been tonight. Barnes. in quickly and it's his speed that's impressed Terry Venables lovely ball from Ruddock to Wise or so on the charge down the left Beersley and Shearer repositioning in the centre Manaman waiting on the edge of the area Graham Lasso <laughs> finds no sympathy for his call for a corner then it certainly looked like a corner to me yeah Martin but uh the linesman referees are yes, the linesman's on the far side and they, uh, probably he had looking at along the line so a better chance of judging if it's spun off the players are pretty honest usually with their reactions and that looks an honest play the dance troupe the Super Eagles fan club keeping going hoping that their team will do likewise here's 
Pepper. Just fired across. Adipojo can drive it back. Pushed out by Flowers. And Pepper was in an offside position. But Adipojo with a great strike, really, in the circumstances. Yeah, they get to the byline here. It's a lovely cutback, good defending, but a beautiful first touch. His first touch has set it up superbly and a great save from Tim Flowers. Good reactions as well. He's got straight up again just in case uh, if the linesman was sleeping. And the ball, as you see, dipped over Rob Jones. To make the save that much more awkward. It certainly did, yes, and that must have, uh, you know, made it a lot more difficult for Tim Flowers and it looked on the on the replay. Problem now with uh, David Platt. Lovely touch by Eddie Poju. Wanting it on the left foot, made sure it came on the left foot. And Tim Flowers making sure it stays Nigeria nil. Robert Lee back on the bench. We'll hope he'll be back in their team. On Saturday, they're away to Wimbledon. Pit stop for Okocha, one or two others. That does remind you of the World Cup. <laughs> uh, King and replacing the lost liquid was of vital importance. Different climatic conditions tonight, but still we've seen enough of Nigeria know that African football's potential is not misjudged it's just a question of whether they'll ever be able to appreciate maybe the finer points of the professional game in terms of defensive organisation perhaps impetuosity in their play it's certainly given England a good game here Tim Flowers has been watching uh, our number 10, the gotcha. <laughs> Tremendous skill from uh, Tim Flowers. Well, Pat Letizia seems ready for action. With 13 minutes to go, Teddy Sheringham as well. Where the Terry Venables feels that he's spotted a bit of tiredness in certain areas. Beardsley. Chukwu forcing Shearer wide. Wondering there whether there might be a free kick. The decision is a corner. And any changes that England want to make might be just put on ice for a moment. Fist for the goalkeeper. Rufai stayed down. McManaman could fire it back. Oh, it's blocked on the line. The whistle is gone. And the referee reacting to an injured goalkeeper. England might feel that the play had gone on quite as long as it had, a few extra seconds, that they were entitled to get a second goal here. So, yeah, I think he's caught one in the face uh, accidentally from, from Neil Ruddock. But uh, it would have been interesting if that had been the centre-half or an outfield player, whether the referee would have, would have caught the shot so quickly. I'm not sure he wouldn't play. No, but uh, he's come to the defence there of the goalkeeper. But an interesting point, one that uh, we don't see many times. So Peter Beardsley and Alan Shearer, their work is done for the night. The fresh legs up front, along to Teddy Sheringham and Matt Letizia. Yeah, they've worked very hard, the two of them up front. In the second half, I felt their little combinations were just starting to gel. Obviously, Terry's very happy with them too. Uh, he's played them many a times now, Beardsley and uh, Shearer. And it's now time to, to look at sharing them again. And, uh, and obviously, Matthew Letizia, I feel this is a great uh, a great game for him tonight. And if he'd have, have started, I felt that he would have really had a good game. But uh, we'll wait and see how he does uh, for the last... Uh, it's another Dennis Wise corner. We'll find Ruddock, both eyes very much on the ball. It shows a lack of discipline again in their defensive work. I mean, Neil Ruddock's actually making a challenge on the goalkeeper with no Nigerian defender anywhere near him. 
That's why we've got the stoppage here, Glenn. It benefited at one of your players, Dennis Wise, but were you surprised Matt Letizia on the back of the Romania game wasn't given a second chance straight away? Yes, I was. I, I felt that the way he's been performing this year and last year, well, it's, uh, he's, a, he's a special, talented player. And I felt that he would be playing tonight, uh, especially against the Nigerians. They're very skilled for themselves, but they do they do leave spaces in the last third. Uh, where I felt Matthew could do exploit. Well, the game has to be restarted with a drop ball. Rufai will continue. Well, both nations now with different combinations up front as we move into the closing stages. Nike has been there for the start. On the left-hand side for Nigeria. Wise. Here's Iroha. Side virtually throughout the match for Nigeria. Pepa. Now Okocha. They know where to find Finidi, that's for sure. It's a clever early ball, too. And Monique can head it across. Ipepa. And uh, Steve Howie lost the ball for a moment as he spun round. Help was on hand. And England's lead looked precarious for a few seconds then. Barnes, Platt, so waiting for Wise, who didn't fail him, back for Lasso again. Letizier, extra charge of electricity around the ground, not quite so on the pitch. chance to bring you up to date with what's on offer from the uh, FA Carling Premiership for you this coming weekend. We're at Filbert Street, how will match the City Fair. First game since that 5-0 thrashing at Old Trafford. That's our Super Sunday, and it's the Merseyside derby for you on Monday night, a real treat. Offside. And on Tuesday, in the FA Cup first round replays, we go to Kingfield Sports Ground in Surrey, Woking against Barnet. Remember, first match at Underhill finished four each. And we've got that we'll have in store for us. Barnes. Letizia. Now Wise. Nigeria holding a line on the edge of the area. Seven minutes left. England lead by one goal to nil. Oh, and Sheringham slipped through then and has been judged offside. I'm not so sure that was offside, Martin. I felt that the fullback had played him on. A uh, lovely little uh, ball from John Barnes, but a, a great run from Teddy Sheringham. He's, he's run across the line. You see him here, he peels off across the line and definitely uh, onside. We heard the whistle, only he would tell us, but it went wide. <laughs> Problem here for uh, Andy Poju, who was all struggling a few minutes ago. And the referee saying, well, if you're feeling the injury, you're going to stop the game. If you don't have attention on the pitch, you'll have to go off. Game restarts with the free kick for the apparent offside. Oh, that's a mistake by Ruddock. Finidi. So sliding in, and Ruddock happy to turn it away. Newman have a player down at the moment. I think it's Dennis.
only, dare I say, a bang in the face. Hopefully threaten his appearance for Chelsea at the weekend. But they've got to make a substitution for Nigeria for the injury to Adi Fogio. Sign of the number 16, Kanu, getting ready. I think the tempo of the game at the moment has, has lost its momentum. There's been a few substitutions, there's been a few injuries to Intel, uh, and it's definitely slowed down. It would be nice if England could just finish on a nice flurry and get a second goal uh, and, and send uh, the supporters home uh, really happy. Well, on comes the number 16, Kanu, who's only 18. He plays for Ajax as well, like uh, Finidi, who's a member of the Nigerian youth team that were world champions at under 17 level last year. Of course, Nigeria have a fantastic record in those world competitions at lower levels. Leticia. It is McManaman. Well, it was worth a try. It was a packed area that he was taking on. I think there was better options there, uh, Martin. Teddy Sheridan was all, all on his own on the uh, on the outside on the right of him. He chose to go alone. Might have passed to Teddy there. Okocha kept out of harm's way again, which England have been able to do with him for the most part. But his individual talents have illuminated the evening. Has it been such a constant danger from uh, Nigeria in the second half? They're still pleasing the crowd. Is Amunike? It just left that cutting edge uh, in the last third, in and around the penalty area. Ekobon. Oh, so matched him, in the corner. They're still not sure of the victory, Messrs Venables and Robson. It's understandable. Chukwu has come up. Plenty of big, powerful Nigerian frames to be thrown at this corner. Power stays on his line. Okoku. With Pepa trying the volley. Player we first saw in Britain in the World Under-17 tournament in Scotland in 1989. He really was the star turn for that group of Nigerian players. Frustration there for Terry Venables, point to put to Don Howe. It's been another of those evenings, Glenn, where we get to this stage and we've got to try and put it into some sort of perspective. Yes, I mean, that was a prime example there. Uh, that the Nigerians have thrown a corner in there and we've dealt with it. We've, we've been disciplined in our defending and that's just a part of their game that they need to sort out. If they do that sort of thing, then they're going to become a, a very strong nation because they've certainly got the raw talent. Um, but any set play that they've put in there, we've dealt with professionally. And I think that's a lesson coming out of the game for Nigeria. Uh, as for England at the moment, then, you know, we've played within ourselves. Uh, there were times when we've put things together up front well. The games just seem to be petering out at the moment. It'd be nice to finish on a good note. Sherry, plenty of individual incentive for the players. Flat. put that one down to rust <laughs> David's been out for a while <laughs> it is one way of ensuring that his is the winning goal I suppose <laughs> <laughs> but of course not an intentional one Tim Flowers will be pleased made a couple of uh, important saves particularly the one from Adipoju in the second half and, uh, not just like goal scorers for tallying up the goals that they get. Goalkeepers will tell you how many shutouts they've had. Now it's very close to one for England here, as he had when he played his other international under Terry Venables in May against Greece. Letizia. It's come back his way. Four players in green 
covering the area that Letizia was heading towards. Off the four. Confident enough to take a chance there, taking on Sheringham. Kanu likewise. Individual gifts again for Nigeria. So England pressed enough to force the mistake. Keep the ball in Nigerian territory as the referee realises that we're now in stoppage time. Platt. Tugging back then, and it'll be a free kick against David Platt. That was a silly foul to give away, really, from, from Platt there, because uh, the defender had the problem. At this stage of the, uh, the proceedings, on the 90th minute, it's the last thing you really want to do is uh, let them have a free kick and put it into your area. Well, be a nervy moment or two yet before the final whistle. Nigeria have a free kick. But winning the match is only part of the exercise here. It's the performance as much as the result that will be under scrutiny. It's, it's easy uh, for Terry Venables to base his arguments from a winning position. And that's what England are in here, McManaman. First and foremost, carrying the ball away from the England goal. Flat. He's given Steve McManaman a taste of the level that he's aiming for and England would like him to achieve. Oh, sharing it. Poor concentration there by Okuchukwu, who's otherwise had a pretty good match at the heart of Nigeria's defending. Rob Jones and looking to finish on a high. I think that typifies their game, Martin. I mean, last minutes there, that's the most vital area as a defender, the central goals, and, and really, he almost give us a, a goal out of nothing on the plate, and I think that's the sort of thing that they've got to become better at. Makoku trying to repair the damage single-handedly. McManaman. Letizia was on through the centre, but England preferred to just uh, keep it here. And while they've got the ball, the result is in the bag. Letizia is England's last senior international of 1994. And the win that was wanted, almost confirmed. not been a gilt edge performance but with so many changes well should we have expected that Glenn? well i think it was uh, always going to be a, a bit of an experimental team in the system that uh, terry was going to find it but he's finding out about uh, i think neil ruddock on the night has had a, a very solid debut i think dennis wires has been our probably most productive player going forward and it's in, the, in spells in the second half where Shearer and Beardsley put some nice little combinations together. So there's a lot of good things coming up, but it, it's not quite as constructive or as uh, precise a performance as we would have liked. And uh, as perhaps the supporters here would have liked, but they've kept going, as England have had to do. There's certainly been some wonderful bits of skill from the Nigerians to, to enjoy, uh, be it in, in the middle third of the pitch. their sharpest attacking moments apart from that Hadley Pojo shot came perhaps in the opening half an hour once England had scored they've been less of a threat remember they are the African champions they certainly scared the living daylights out of Italy in the World Cup meeting in the second round in the United States and we all know where Italy ended up in the final itself so England's performance has got to be put into that context. Equivoc. Fifth minute of time added on. I think a major problem as well, Martin, is that to judge our results is that we've played all our games here at Wembley until we go away. Just to break in there, Glenn, because here's Ipepa. And it could yet be caught. Okocha. It's deflected. Oh. Well, wow. when that looked up, there was a real chance. That could have dropped to the back of Tim Flower's net. How long are we playing? I think Terry Venables was saying there, with some justification. Nigeria have a corner. If they needed to take it. Oh, it's blocked on the line. Well, 
the closest of all. And the danger is still not past it. Pepper. Graham Lasso coming off the post then. Set the ball out. Otherwise, Nigeria would have certainly got a draw here at Wembley. Letizia. As it is, it could be 2-0. Wise. A sting in the tail. Well, it just shows you at this level, you just cannot switch off. There was a couple of chances gone begging there for Nigeria to get something out of the game. And uh, there you see Matizia, he's done a, a, a good, good block on the line there. But it shows the advantage of having all men back as well. In the last minute of the game, every shirt was back in its own penalty area. Letizia. Here's the so uh, upfield. In England saviour, a moment or two ago. Letizia. Sheringham to smack it across. And behind. If that had gone in, Martin, that would have been a smack to Van Batson's goal. <laughs> Not European, the European Championships, championship. yeah. Well, England beat the African champions by one goal to nil. David Platt supplied it. Answering the call as he's so often done. The unbeaten record under Terry Venables goes on. But he now faces the frustration. It looks like four months until he can assemble his senior side again. Nigeria go off so close in the closing moments to equalising. They can look back on a memorable year, including the invitation to Wembley tonight, where their obvious strengths, the individual inspiration, couldn't counterattack the problem of perhaps playing for the first time since the World Cup, the problem of some reckless defending which gave away the free kick, which Dennis Wise took.